let us still our hearts and our minds as we come into God's presence to worship this morning.
Please join me in the call to worship. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, peace in heaven and glory to God. Hosanna, save us. Blessed is the coming kingdom to our ancestor David. Hosanna is the highest heaven. Be seated. Did you happen to catch that second stanza? Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, though the eye of sinfulness thy glory may not see. See, that's why we come to this font every week. We come to this font because we are aware of the darkness that is around us, that is inside us, the darkness that we enter into this week in particular, that prevents us from seeing the glory of God. And so we come to this font assured of the promises that God has made to us in the waters of baptism to tell the truth about all of that. To tell the truth so that we may hear once again the promise of our forgiveness so that our eyes may begin to see the glory of God that is all around us. But first, let us confess our sin. Would you pray with me? Oh God, you know us well. We are quick to speak of faith, but slow to live it fully. We shout Hosanna as Jesus approaches as did the people of Jerusalem many years ago. But we do not want him to come too close, not close enough to really see. We are quick to claim faith in Jesus, but like the throng who greeted his entry into Jerusalem, we are fickle, slow to live such faith fully and everywhere. By failing to embrace everyone, we have failed to embrace you. 
We are quick to want the blessings you offer, but like the twelve who spent the last week with him, we are slow to accept the pain and suffering of Christ-like sacrifice. Forgive our weakness, failure, and fear, that by your tender mercies we might be restored to you and to one another and raised to new life. in a position to condemn? Certainly not us. We're in no position to condemn anyone. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. And Christ died for us. Christ will die for us. Christ will be raised for us. Christ reigns in power for us. Christ prays for us. So anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. That old life is gone. A new life has begun. Friends, this is the good news. Know that in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Be at peace. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. I invite you to stand and share a sign of Christ's peace as you greet one another this morning. be seated. Good morning, everyone. How are... So, I think you probably might have an answer to this question. Do any of you know what we call today? The answer is in your hand, Marina. Palm Sunday. That's right. This is the Sunday where we, we wave our palm branches. Yeah. And we remember how Jesus entered Jerusalem riding on a donkey, a very humble animal. And the people just took what was 
at hand. Because we don't have palm branches here in Albuquerque, do we? We don't have palm trees. That's other places. But they took the palm branches that they had, and that's something that we remember on Palm Sunday, is that we don't have to go looking for special ways to praise God. We just can find whatever is right in front of us. And sometimes it's something that everybody else overlooks. Sometimes it's some, somebody who everybody else overlooks. But those are the, the ways and those are the people who praise God with their whole heart. And you can do that too with your palm branches. Very gently. Thank you, James. It's always exciting on Palm Sunday, isn't it? And to remember Jesus coming to us and celebrating what happens next. Let's pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for the promise of Jesus coming to us humbly, that we might praise him as he takes his last steps. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Will you pray with me? 
Send your spirit among us, O oh God, as we meditate on your love. Prepare our minds to hear your word. Move our hearts to embrace what we hear and strengthen our will to follow your way. This we pray through Christ, our Savior. Amen. Friends, our Palm Sunday scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel according to Mark. We're going to pick up at chapter 11 and hear verses 1 through 11. Listen, friends, for God's word for you. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it, and send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks along the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple and when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. A few weeks ago, our youth began preparing for what we called their Lenten Olympics. The Linton Olympics was a game I devised. It was a scavenger hunt, so our Bible trivia activity, and it occurred last week. The youth were sent all over the church to find envelopes with slips of paper detailing Jesus' journey from Palm Sunday to Easter morning. However, in order to prepare for this Sunday school event of the season, the youth had to initially learn about what all went into Palm, this Palm Passion and Resurrection story. The first week we did this, we took a moment and we went through all four Gospels and they listed everything that happened from Palm Sunday to Easter morning. And as they finished and stepped back from, their, from the whiteboard, I asked them what they noticed. And they stood there and said, wow, that's a lot more than I remember. Not only did it include all the passages that we have spent time on in worship this Lent, but it also entailed four more chapters worth of preaching, healing, anointing, and teaching before the passion piece even begins. Some of the most quoted Jesus sayings occur in this one week span between palms and resurrection. And dear ones, we didn't even begin to cover half of this during Lent. There is so much of the Jesus story that is worked into these last few chapters. It is like our gospel writer knew he was running out of time and he wrote like it, which leaves us readers turning pages as quickly as we can, trying to keep up with the race to the cross, reminding us that resurrection can't and won't wait. But before we can set ourselves on Calvary, my friends, we have to rewind. We have to rewind back to the beginning, back to the palm parade, back to the before, the before the shift to light speed, which carries us to the end of the gospel, trying to catch our breath. It's time to rewind and start again, back at the beginning with the waving of palms and an unfinished parade. 
At the beginning of December, Eric, Lucy, and I went to our first Twinkle Lights Parade in Knob Hill. We bundled everyone up and we rode the bus through the campus to the main drag where the parade was being held. We found a spot and started to get Lucy excited for the parade. And as the event started, we watched decorated vehicle after decorated vehicle with glimmering eyes and delight. After the first hour, we were mesmerized. After the second hour, we were tired. And by the third hour, we were trying to see where the parade ended. <laughs> and we couldn't find it. However, somewhere in there, there was a lull. And we wondered if the parade was actually over. It was about 10 minutes, and no cars had gone by. Everyone kept waiting. But we decided we were just going to head back to the car, unsure of what had just happened. This is not unlike the first Palm Sunday, where the day started with fanfare and ends with Jesus simply walking away. Crowds of people line the streets crying out for Jesus, Hosanna, save us! as he rides on a colt, which is not too dissimilar from the animal that carried his mother to Bethlehem. With cloaks being thrown to pave the way, it was a procession fit for a king of the people, where folks used what they had to welcome in Jesus, the one who comes in the name of the Lord. However, according to scholars, an event of this magnitude should have concluded with some sort of ritual, a sacrifice, a burnt offering, something along these lines. But rather, Jesus simply comes to the temple and returns to Bethany. It is an anticlimactic ending to the parade the people gave. And friends, it is as if this moment of the story reminds us that God's ways are not our ways. Just like the birth of a savior in a manger, God does the unexpected. Jesus is not crowned, nor does he claim the title of Davidic royalty. Rather, the parade route putters out, and Jesus takes a look around the temple, and then him and his disciples continue on their way. The story continues into the holy week ahead of them, and us. God's ways are not our ways. God does not need a parade or coronation. Rather, it is the next part of the passage that is indicative of who God is. Following the parade, the very next pericope of text that we see is Jesus cleansing the temple in Jerusalem claiming that it had become a den of robbers and turning over tables with righteous anger. This tells us that God has no need for royal ceremonies or optics. God cares about people and equity and justice. Much like any nonviolent resistance, this Palm Sunday ending is not a mistake or a simply forgotten part of the story. Rather, the author of Mark is intentional with this unfinished royal procession. It is a bold statement that God's dominion and reign cannot be contained or constructed by human hands, not by Rome and not by religious authorities. This story teaches us that we do not control God's narrative. That is for God alone. And yet it also reminds us that God is there alongside of us, alongside the suffering, the poor, the grieving, the vulnerable. God hears our cries and will turn over tables and die on a cross to be with us, to save us, to heal us, to bring forth new life. In the words of biblical scholar Reverend Dr. Brian Blunt, God is on the loose in our world. And that, friends, is a very good thing. In Detroit, Michigan, there is an artist 
by the name of Tyree Guyton. Tyree grew up loving art and his community. As a kid, he was always tinkering and creating art out of spare parts and pieces he would find around his neighborhood. And when he grew up, he channeled his creativity into a neighborhood-wide art installation known as the Heidelberg Project. Tyree is a black man who lives in a historically black neighborhood near the Burwood Wall, an actual wall that is still standing that was built in Detroit to separate the black and white communities. Tyree was tired of seeing his community labeled as dirty or unkempt, and so he turned the trash he found into art. He took broken down cars and left behind stuffed animals, shoes and more, to make art on the land across the street from his home. Each house is painted vibrantly, and one local neighbor sits on her porch and lets folks sign her house like a guest book for only a couple of dollars. Now the city has seen this as just trash, so they've cleared out their projects multiple times, but Tyree and his team keep building back relentlessly, using the most unexpected resources in unexpected ways to challenge the status quo and demonstrate that beauty is what you make it. No one expected trash turned into art installations or polka dot or bubblegum pink houses to revitalize and help a neighborhood grow and bloom. But it did and continues to do so. God's ways are not our ways. And that's a good thing. Where we see trash, God sees liberation. Where we see a neat and wrapped up ending, God says, hold on. When we fail to listen to the cries of Hosanna, save us, Jesus rides in on a colt, feet touching the ground, reminding us that we are not alone. Beloveds, God is on the loose in our world, subverting systems of oppression, drawing in those who have been cast out, binding up the brokenhearted, healing the sick, caring for the poor. God is on the loose in the faithful waving of palms and the spreading of cloaks and in the unfinished parades to remind us in this hard and holy week that God is not done with us yet. Amen. Amen. Friends, now let us stand in body and spirit and say what we believe together. Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ is the, the image of the invisible God, God the firstborn of all creation. creation. In him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Amen.
Would you be seated? Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church on this Palm Sunday. We're grateful to have you worshiping with us this morning. Grateful for those of you who are joining us via the live stream. We'd love it if you'd say hello. Let us know you're there in the live chat. You can also share prayer requests there or in the comments below if you're watching this later. Joys or concerns that you want to lift up. Here in the sanctuary, we have friendship pads in each of the pews. If you would find a minute to take the uh, to find the burgundy folder, it tends to be towards the center aisle in your pew. Write your name down, pass it along so that we can know who's in worship with us this morning. There are also prayer request slips in the pew racks in front of you. If you have a prayer request here in the sanctuary, you can fill that out, put it in the offering plate as it comes around in a minute. We gather all the prayer requests from all the places and services, put them on a list to send out to our church community so that we can keep praying for each other throughout the week. Some announcements for you in the life of the church. Our fiction book group is meeting this Thursday at 10 a.m. in the conference room to discuss the book Mad Honey by Jody Picoult. Um, you are welcome to join them for that. Our Family Promise Week begins next Sunday, Easter Sunday, and runs through the week where we uh, provide food to families who are experiencing homelessness and are looking to transition out of that. Um, they are staying at Montgomery Church of Christ and. We need volunteers to sign up to host dinners or just to bring food items. That sign up is in the commons downstairs um, where the drinks are. Um, you can take a look and see what availability there is to volunteer there. Our library committee is going to be down one in a couple of weeks and we'd love to have somebody to help out Sandy Parsons who um, does that work with Joanne Puckett. So if that's something that you think you'd have an interest in, please let us know and we'll put you in touch with Sandy and she can give you the rundown. We are ordering geraniums this year for Easter. Those will be arriving on Wednesday. You can pick them up on Thursday. There's information in your bulletin on colors and cost and how to pre-order those with Susan Smith. Um, so go ahead and if you want to do that, uh, get a hold of Susan and she'll get you set up. Um, just to give you a rundown of the schedule for this week, since it is Holy Week, we are going to have a service in the sanctuary on Thursday night at 7 o'clock. It is a Monday, Thursday, tenebrae service. Often when we come to worship on Sundays, we celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper at the end or toward the end of the service. Well, on this particular night, we'll be doing that first. We'll be uh, coming to the table just as Jesus and his disciples did before walking out into the shadows of what is to come, and we will make that transition in that service. On Friday, Good Friday, we won't have a formal service per se, but this space will be open from noon to three with contemplative music, several prayer stations located around the sanctuary for you to come in, for you to enter into the spirit of the day, to contemplate it. There will be, there will be prompts and opportunities for you to consider um, the magnitude of that day. Um, the final station will be an opportunity to receive uh, an anointed blessing and prayer, um, and I'll be here for the full three hours um, if anybody wants to just pray with me. Um, and then on Saturday, Essie, talk to us about the Holy Saturday Walk. So friends, in the liminal space between Good Friday and Easter, we're going to take a holy pause and gather at Kingley Beach. Um, you can find that information online or give me a call and I will send you the address. And we'll gather near the Central Pond, so follow the signs and you'll find us there at 9 a.m. And we'll spend time, um, I'll offer a brief blessing as we begin. And then we'll walk for about an hour and gather at 10 for a prayer before we go about our day um, until we gather again for Easter morning. So we hope you'll join us. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out and ask me. Um, the other thing I just want to make sure folks know is that um, on Easter Sunday, so next Sunday, since there is no Sunday school, during the Sunday school hour, about 9.45 to 10.45, right? Have I got that right? We're going to be having an Easter egg hunt uh, for any and all kiddos. So join us in the social hall as um, our youth set up the egg hunt for us. Uh, Mary, Maddie, and myself will have a little craft set up. Um, so we hope you'll join us for crafting an Easter egg hunts next week. 
Perfect. And just to let you know, we will continue to have our regular services, 8.30 downstairs in the Fellowship Hall, 11 o'clock here in the sanctuary next Sunday for Easter Sunday. We hope to see you all there. And now let us come to God in prayer. The response this morning for the prayer, I will say, your kingdom come, if you will respond, your will be done. Let us pray. Jesus, remember us when you come into your kingdom. Your kingdom come. We pray for your church around the world. We ask for new life. Your kingdom come. We pray for all who carry out ministries in your church, asking for your grace and wisdom as they do. Your kingdom come. We pray for people who have accepted spiritual disciplines through these 40 days and ask inspired discipleship for them. Your kingdom come. We pray for Christians in every land and we ask new unity in your name, the name of Jesus Christ. Your kingdom come. We pray for Jews, Muslims, and people of other faiths, asking your divine blessing upon them. Your kingdom come, your will be done. For those who cannot believe, we pray and ask for your faithful love. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We pray for governors, rulers, leaders of every land, asking that your spirit would guide them in the ways of peace. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We pray for people who are suffering, who are sorrowing, who are ill, who are dying. And we seek your holy and healing presence for them, with them, that they might know the peace that passes our understanding. Your kingdom come, your will be done. God of love, as in Jesus Christ you gave yourself to us, so may we give ourselves to you, a living according to your holy will. Keep our feet firmly in the way where Christ leads us. Make our mouths speak the truth that Christ teaches us. Fill our bodies with the life that is Christ within us. In his holy name we pray as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And how do we respond? How can we respond to the one who comes to us, the one who is on the loose, transforming this world all around us? We bring what we have to offer, our gifts, our lives, as we receive this morning's offer.
God, you are on the loose in our world, up to amazing and incredible things as you build your kingdom here. And so, O oh God, we offer to you what we have, the gifts of our time, our talent, our hearts, so that they may be used to glorify you and the work you are doing. Thank you, God, for loving us and helping us to love and share with one another. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Remember that God is not done with us yet. God is in the midst of our waving palms and unfinished parades, reminding us that God's ways are not our ways. That when we're, where we see trash, God sees liberation. Where we see neat and tidy endings, God says, wait a second, hold on. And that is good news. So let this carry you into Palm Sunday and beyond, into this week of holy times. And may it be a reminder that God is always with you, today and every day. Amen. And go in love and peace to serve our Lord.